Hello, good friends, new and old. Uh, thank you for always uh, keeping it Julie's Odile Show. My name is Juliet. Welcome to another edition of Julie's Odile Show, Life Moment episode. And today's new episode, we're looking at the life of a rapper here in Soroti City. Most people do not feel the touch of hip hop, but with him, you can feel the power of hip hop. He's here to share with us his journey in music, his life journey, how he's been surviving the challenges in the music industry in Teso, let alone his life story. And that is none other than Sparrow. But also remember that we are powered by the Garden and Nest Launch here in Soroti City. We have a bar, we have accommodation, this beautiful seat that you're seeing. And oh, there's a just beautiful view that you're seeing at the background. Also accommodation at a very cheaper, cheaper price. You can check it out garden nest launch here in soroti city and now allow me welcome the guest of the day i do this rap shit for my reputation my limitation i really got no limitation or hesitation i only do this on occasion i got my songs playing every single radio station or registration i pull up on the police station i get my thugs i don't even need to make a statement king of the streets but you want to pay me snitch on your own just to get a payment saying just a song you know and it's hey that's not other sparrow you g <laughs> hey, what's up, Julie? Cool, how are you? I'm good. Welcome to my show. Thank you so much for having me. Sparrow UG, yeah. where did it start from? How did you get <clears throat> this name? Uh, Sparrow, Sparrow is an acronym. Mm -hmm. Like when you write it backwards, it's O Rap S. So, mm -hmm. like, O is the first letter of my first name, and S is the last letter of my, is the first letter of my last name. So, mm -hmm. like, when you put rap in the middle, it's almost like rap is what I do, and it's my middle name mm -hmm. indirectly. That's how I came up with that. So your real name is? Onapakol Samuel. Onapakol Samuel. So oh. when you write O and you put rap in the middle, then you put S. Becomes, then you write it backwards, it's Sparrow. Yeah, it's come, it becomes Onapakol Samuel rap. Onapakol rap Samuel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Otherwise, uh, where do you come from? Oh, I come from Kumi. But like, uh, I move around a lot, especially Soroti, like. Hmm. Yeah, most of the radio stations are here, most of my friends are here. Mm -hmm. So like I move around doing promo a lot, linking up with friends, making connections and stuff like that. Yeah, It's been a year ever since I saw you. Uh, you disappeared somehow and now you've come back uh, with a new new single uh, titled Loyalty. Tell us more about your disappearance and then appearing. Um, You know like sometimes it can't always be about the music thing, you know life can really put you to some places and you really have to work on that and not be on the music thing all the time but like you know passion is passion it keeps on dragging you mm -hmm. yeah so i'm back you're back after one year of a recess and now you've come back with a new a new hit single loyalty that, you guys should check it out like loyalty is a new crazy banger it's on youtube check out my youtube channel sparrow yuji check out loyalty my new single it's crazy i promise you're gonna love it uh, uh, before we came on set, I was actually telling you that you're one person who does not feud on social media. I wonder how you manage to keep your life as calm as possible. Uh, it's just who I am. Like I, I don't, I don't do that a lot. I don't even mix so much. Mm. Yeah, I only got a few friends that I talk to like that, and maybe that's, maybe also the the way I grew up affects that a lot. Mm. Like I grew up in a very calm background. Like, yeah, we don't. Do that so much. Okay. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 27. You're 27. You're older. You look younger than 27. It's because I smile a lot. <laughs> and that is why. And I'm black. You know, black don't crack. Don't crack. Yeah. <laughs> but black sometimes cracks. So you're 27 years. At 27, you started music at what age? No, I'm not yet 27. I I'm know you're clocking there. Yeah. It's so. okay. Uh, what 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 stage do you start your music? At what age? Mm, I started doing music. Uh, in 2017 mm. yeah, that's when I released my first single and it's been a beautiful journey since then like I've always dropped you know bangers and stuff like that mm. like I've always kept the fans entertained and yeah by now it feels like a responsibility mm. yeah. so what age was that was that like 20 21 mm. something yeah it's been long yeah it's been a while sure I think you just live a calm life. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but what could have been that reason? Because a number of artists, trust me, want to be seen in public, and for you, you're under there. I don't even like fame like that. 
Mm. I don't even like them so much. I don't like attention. Mm. Even when I get into a party or something, I just prefer to be somewhere in a corner where not everyone can see me mm -hmm. and reach out all the time. I just, I just love it simple and calm, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't like so much attention, like walking in a place and everyone sees you, everyone is mm. cheering. Like, mm. I don't even really feel weird. With you. People, people love this. It's called celebrity life. Uh, I think just growing up affected me like that because I, I don't come from a place where you get that a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I've always had few friends and I don't get so comfortable around so many people. Sure. Like that. Though I love performing for my fans, mm -hmm. it's really cool. Mm -hmm. But then like, I don't mix a lot, although I'm so down to earth like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You rarely do that. So uh, let's start it from your family background. Uh, Growing up as a child, I grew up in a family of five. Yeah, but like, till I was like, I don't know, ten or something. It was mm. just the three of us. Like, I had two elder sisters, and it was just me. Like, mm, the only boy. Yeah, but mm. then I I loved music and movies a lot. Mm. That was my whole life. Like, even in school, the only time I would speak up is when I'm narrating a movie to the students or something. Mm. Yeah, like I'll gather a whole squad to just listen to me tell them how the movie was. <laughs> Which was your favorite? Which one was that that you remember you used to narrate so much? I don't know. Maybe it's <laughs> the rainbows and stuff. <laughs> the Van Dams. Yeah, and I think it affected my accent so much because mm. like by then there were no translated movies in Atlas, so, so it was basically English. Mm. So like I'll translate while while using the person's <laughs> accent and how the guy was talking. Yeah. And people loved it a lot. Like, oh. I would gather the whole class, just come and listen to me. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was fun. And I think that affected my accent, mm. my rap accent. Yeah, the American movies I used to watch mm. and the music I was, mm. I was listening to. Because mm. my sister used to listen to a lot of Westlife too. And, I know. Yeah. Your accent is actually good. You have Thank a great you. accent. It's just the movies, I think. I thought for once, I thought perhaps maybe you, you studied maybe in those Kampala schools. <laughs> That's what everyone thinks. <laughs> when I tell them I started in Wiggins and they're like, oh. Okay, let's go to the schools that you went to. I started in Wiggins basically. Mm -hmm. Most of my high school life, my primary life was all there. Like, I couldn't get so far away from home. Mm -hmm. I'll go to a boarding school for like two terms and be like, no. Go back home. Yeah. And I was good in English in school. Mm -hmm. I think that is the other thing. Mm -hmm. I remember sometimes the teachers would even let me present. As a, as a teacher, mm. an English class, and mm. it would feel good, yeah. <laughs> and that was because of your brightness, like you loved English so much. Yeah, English was my favorite. Okay. So uh, most of your uh, your studies, you did it uh, in uh, Wiggins. Kumi. Yeah, Kumi, basically. Which particular schools? Wiggins Primary, Wiggins Secondary, yeah. And then, did you go to an, another higher level? Mm, I went to Kumi University for mm. IT, mm. a little bit, yeah. Yeah, then I shall. So you did you did you complete your IT? No, I just did a certificate and I was like, no, let me go and make money. Was music part of your making money? No, that music money comes in once in a while, but like mm. I just do it for the love mostly. Mm. Yeah, like when I get a gig or something, I make some money, but like I just do it because I feel like it's a responsibility for me now. Mm. It's more than more than just a talent. I feel like I have to do it. <laughs> to represent where I'm from and, mm -hmm. and be the person that inspires these kids to be more who, and who, do more. Who are growing up. Yeah, yeah. So besides music, what do you do? Uh, I sell I sell movies mm. in the movie business. Mm. Then I also do lyric videos. Yeah. Those are like uh, the, the lyric videos. Do you put them on YouTube or something? Yeah. All my lyric videos, I've done them myself. Mm. Not all of them, but most of them. That truly, really, really, I made it myself. Mm. Loyalty is a new song. I made the lyric video myself. Mm. Like, yeah. Now let's look at Loyalty as your new uh, album, your new song that you've come up with, and it's one of the songs you're going to premiere. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to know the reason as to why you came up with. Uh, is it an album or a single? It's a single. The single Loyalty, titled Loyalty. What is that all about? I just realized, like, the streets. Are not what they seem like people fake a lot yeah they pretend to be this and they turn out to be that mm. you know you get betrayed by people you trust your friends mm. sometimes even your family and i was just addressing 
it's really important like i'm so big on loyalty i respect it a lot hmm. yeah it's uh it relates to betrayal that's why you see like most of the parts in loyalty talk about betrayal too because it's, it's the exact nice. opposite and they are so connected sure yeah you can't feel betrayed if someone has not been loyal to you before exactly yeah so that inspired you to come up with that particular song. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Now, the music industry in uh, Teso, what do you see? Is it growing? Is it stagnant? Is there something that can be done about it? Oh, uh, there's a lot that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But I see some people are really pushing forward to making it better, but like, there's still a lot of work, you know? Mm -hmm. The fans need to support the artists. Mm -hmm. The artists need to put more money in their craft, you know? Uh, the the media needs to support the artists too, and mm. the artists also need to support the media. Like everyone needs to contribute something. Mm. Then the event organizers need to pay the artists reasonable money for shows and stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's everyone needs to do something. Mm. Yeah. Is there any particular event that you could have gone to, and then uh, you had issues in line with payment? <laughs> I I I wouldn't want you to maybe disclose, but have you ever encountered yeah. that kind of scenario? Yeah. It happens a lot, especially during the come up, and even of recent, but then like, mm. you know, it just teaches you to watch who you trust. Mm. And like loyalty, like, that song speaks about that a lot. You should mm. check it out, it's on YouTube. <laughs> so loyalty, the video or the lyrical beat? It's a lyric video, for now. So you have to go to YouTube, what is your YouTube channel? Sparrow Yuji. And then check out the Sparrow Uchi's latest by the it's called Loyalty. Yeah. And I need to, it's rap, hip hop, purely hip hop, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess there are so many words there that you need to listen to and get to understand. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Sparrow, mm. I want to uh, find out what best you can do uh, if you were given the authority. Mm -hmm. What would you do to change this music industry in Tesla? Mm. Like, change it, change the trend. What What is that thing that you do? I guess I would come up with a reasonable record label mm. that puts out good music out there, promotes it well, and gets the artist paid. Mm. Yeah, that's what I would do. Do you have a promoter? Do you have a manager? No. Um, I'm independent. But again, like, I don't do this alone. Like, I have friends and people who care about me that help me push. Mm. Yeah. Like our friends in radio, our mm. friends in media, mm. yeah, like they really push a lot. And it's not just my friends, even my fans help out too, like, shout out to my fans. Mm. Yeah. They always help you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like I have a, a full record label, yet it's just my people that are doing stuff for me. So literally, you've been pushing your music on your own? Since 2017. Uh, since 2017 you started it. Yeah. And then uh, there's also issues with uh, uh, recording studios. Mm -hmm. Have you ever encountered any problem in line with recording studios? Uh, yeah. mm, not so much, but it has happened to me once. Like, mm. like when, when you're trying to tell the producer what you want and he's not getting it because mm. he doesn't do a lot of hip hop songs. Mm, mm, mm. And you're struggling really hard to explain to him what you want. What you want. <laughs> you even make weird sounds to tell him, like, I want sure. this effect and sure. it's not getting it. Yeah. yeah, it happens once in a while. But then with the beats, I I think the easiest way I can do it is to buy a beat from producers that have already made them. Then mm. I can record them from here and have them mastered in a studio that I prefer. Mm. That's why I've managed to do it. Have you ever had any challenges in line with your music journey from mm. 2017? Come on, challenges every day. On a daily basis. Yeah. Mm. But the it's mostly major one. it's mostly it's mostly money. Finances. Yeah like, yeah, like you need money a lot. Even if your friends are helping you, like you need to hmm. you know, keep them motivated, you know. Hmm. Even if you have friends on T V, like, you know, they need to feed their families too. So like you need money for almost everything. Sure. Yeah, production, uh promo, moving, you know, hmm. organizing shows and whatever. Like all that is is just cash, like mm. yeah. So the money needs to be put in okay. a lot. That is the biggest I've had so far. Challenge that you find. Yeah. Also, uh, a lot of people talk about your lyrical content, the mm -hmm. the words that you use in your lyrics. Yeah. Uh, what do you say about it? Uh, others say, oh, that boy is vocal. He used mm. lots of words. Um. Actually, I don't feel bad about it. I just feel like it helps me express myself the more and it helps 
it helps the song sound more good because mm -hmm. like there's some parts of a beat where you can't say anything else apart from that mm -hmm. and if you don't put it it sounds so old <laughs> yeah so as a rapper you feel like there's somewhere that should be put between yeah like the, right. yeah. like some part like a real an f word really has to go in there whether you want it or not mm -hmm. like anything else sounds off apart sure. from that mm. yeah so like maybe that's why i do that but i don't do it a lot i try to avoid it mm. yeah but I think and again, uh, I make clean versions of my songs. Sure. The one without that and the one with that, so mm. I can play on radio and stuff like that. Yeah, the radio added. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since you began this music journey, have you had any support from any other person, and more especially from your parents? Do they support you? Uh, emotionally, yeah, I think. What do they tell you? Do they encourage you? They just tell me how much how much of an impact I've made on the music industry and how how my music affects people that they meet every day and how excited they are about my music and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, then sometimes when there is voting for awards and stuff, mm. they also try to push so hard, like, oh. yo, vote, vote for this guy. Like, yes. Yeah, then, uh, yeah, basically that. That is, th there's no criticism from them, like? Mm, my music has never really affected my family like mm. that. The, that's so chill with it, and the other, the other thing is, uh, some fans reach out, you know, like there was this guy, uh, I met him in, I didn't meet him, like I just saw him on the internet and he started talking and, mm. yeah, like he would send some money, be like, do this, do this with this, yeah. He was supporting you financially. Yeah. You just met him online. Yeah, he's. He's not even from Uganda. He loved your, your, your rap songs. Yeah. And it's, it's not just him. Hmm. There's another friend of mine called Utu. He's in North Carolina. Hmm. Thanks, man. Hmm. Uh, he pushes a lot too. Like, he's supportive. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, one of these days we'll hear that you've already flown to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> because if you have international support, I am really happy about that. Yeah, and the other thing is... I don't think I have to go there because it's gonna pull up. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> maybe next year. Yeah. Maybe do a song. Sure. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Would you love to divert your attention from music maybe to the acting scene? The acting kind of career? I love acting. And if there was an opportunity that presented itself, like mm. I'd would, I would really do that. But it wouldn't stop me from doing the music thing too. Mm. Acting is fun. Music is in the blood though. But music is fun too. <laughs> like I would have quit long time. Uh, yeah, if I was just focusing on the money, like I would have left music long time. But mm. it's, it's just a calling. Like it's almost like a responsibility. Mm. Like I have to keep making music for these kids, these 17 year olds. They want to listen to Sparrow. Yeah, they want more and more. and It's almost like a responsibility. Like, mm. like a whole cross I'm carrying. How I can't stop. It's not just about me now. It's about the, the generation. It's about everyone, yeah. Sure. How do you compose yourself when you're going to do hip hop? It's heavy. It's really heavy. I take time writing my songs. I take time writing my songs and I rehearse a lot so it almost happens naturally. Mm. Yeah. It's just something that comes through. And How long do you take to write your songs? It depends on how long I want to take. Mm. I think I just choose how long I want to take with the song. Or sometimes I finish a whole song then I just keep on changing lyrics. Mm. But like sometimes I don't take that long. Like for the Mac Pivas, I wrote it in, I think two days, mm. or one day for Truly. Then Loyalty, I just packed the beat there and I was just writing whenever I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like when I get time after two weeks, I put one line. And it's done. Yeah. And then you go back again the next day. Yeah. And it depends out. on the mood, I guess. Like when I'm in the mood of writing something about Loyalty, like I'm pissed off, I write some line. And it's then I'm in a happy mood. I feel like I can't write right now. I do something else like that. Oh, so it's about mood swings. Mm -hmm. That's why when you listen to that song, it has so many mood swings. Like mm. the first verse starts when I'm angry. The second one, you have some hope. Yeah, it, it, from <laughs> anger to sadness, then mm. from sadness to happiness, then oh. from happiness to excitement. Like you can really feel the mood swings as the beat changes. Mm. Yeah. So as we're coming to an end, I want to know uh, where do you see your music from now, like a few years from now? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to keep on doing it. Mm. Yeah, like I said, it's not just about me anymore. And I, to some extent, I really feel like if there was another dope artist like me, you know, mm. so mm. that I could get some time out and rest too, like... <laughs> 
So what kind of like it's a lot of responsibility. I don't know, like lyrically good. Okay. Yeah. You're trying to you're trying to let us know that the lyrical beats of other artists are not good. Mm. Not pleasing. I don't mean that. Like the the genre has been different, but yeah, like I for hip hop, it's hip hop, it, it's crazy. Mm. Like hip hop requires a lot of creativity, a lot of lyricism. Mm. Yeah, it's not like other Afro things where you where you sing one word for like one minute and it's still cool. Mm. Yeah. So you feel like your music has to go on and on and on. For now, yeah. yeah. But again, like if, if there was another dope artist mm. that does hip hop like me, like. It wouldn't have to take a break, like maybe one year or two years or three. And allow then I can, them. Yeah. Don't then you I can think come back and that's the time when you even feel like, okay, I need to compete with this kid. This kid has come up. I want to show them that I'm still the legend. Oh, uh, it's not about me. <laughs> it's, just, it's just about the game. Like okay. I just want the the Teso hip hop game to keep going up. Like, mm. Yeah. Wow. Even if it's not me that is pushing it, like mm. I just want it to be there. I think it's an inspiration. It is an inspiration to the young people. Mm -hmm. If you're a rapper out there and you feel you have the talent, by the mm -hmm. be sure that Asparo Yuji wants that kind of talent. Yeah. Especially hip-hop. That, that, just hip-hop. So, uh, besides that, you, I know you come from Kumi, right? Yeah, yeah. What Kumi particular Kumi. part of Kumi? Uh, yeah, the village and all that. Mm, I'm from Nero, but like, my whole life I spent in town. Like, Kumi town. So most of your time you're in Kumi. You do your recording, like producing your songs, you produce from Kumi? No, I work with a lot of online producers. Oh, like okay. They they send me a beat and be like, yeah, I made a beat for you, check mm, this out. Mm, mm. Yeah, I've worked with a lot of international producers. I've worked with uh, our local producers like like Gooden. Mm. Shout out to Gooden, he produced King of the Streets. Mm. He sent me that beat and I was like, yo, I have to do something on this. Then he made even Toxic. Mm. Then Genius, Genius remasters my songs, Lars records them. Yeah, shout out to you guys. Aru Pepe inclusive. Yeah, yeah. Aru Pepe Who wrote crazy. that song? I wrote it on my own. And I remember uh, telling a friend of mine by then, like, mm. like I have a song called Aru Pepe, I want to record it. Like, nah. <laughs> the title, no, no, that is not nice. <laughs> but it's, it's crazy, it's like my biggest song right now. It is. It's on crazy songs. Like when you sit down and listen to a room paper, you'll be like, mm -mm. It was so discouraging. It was like, no, that song is not going to work out. But, but I, you went ahead. Yeah, I just pushed myself to it. I think it was just a gut or something. Mm. Yeah, that's when I realized like my artist was good lyrically. Sure. So whenever I drop an artist of us, people love it. But do you speak artists like generally? No. It's not like you in a, 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 the, other, the other way. No, like <laughs> when you find Mika the Cowboys, like, <laughs> we really speak artists. So, like oh. I really go off. Wow. To that there, so like an <laughs> speedy like <laughs> That is great. It just depends on who I'm talking to, I guess. Sure, sure. Mm. So uh I want you to give an inspiration of, of strength, inspiration of mm. power. You say you are here to change the you're doing this for the kids. Mm. You're doing this for those who want to be like you. Yeah. Please look straight into that camera and let them know what exactly they can do, what can be in that that can inspire them. Um if you're young out there, you're talented, whatever it is, like it doesn't really have to be music. Like keep pushing forward, you know? As long as you love what you're doing, you're good at what you're doing, don't stop doing that. Just keep moving on. You know, soon like an opportunity will come up and you'll be the best at what you do because cause you love it, you're good at it. Mm. So whatever it is, don't give up on your dream. Yeah, keep pushing. All right, that was a one and one with Sparrow Yuji. He says the name Yuji was added on. But inspiration is what we do. We want to inspire the young generation. Someone who wants, has talent, you have to work hard to achieve. You had all his stories, the life, the, the journey to music, yeah. How he started it and how he's going and where he wants his music to reach. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please drop a comment below. Let us know what you think about this video. And also, subscribe. Juliet Amosugut is my YouTube channel. And please like and click on that notification button. Just in case you don't miss out on any, any videos that are coming through on a daily basis. Thank you from us to you. It's a wrap. And yes, it's a wrap. Just like Sparrow says, Aru Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> Sparrow, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy that you've come to share your, your inspirational power. I know a lot of people 
wanted to know who Sparrow is and what he does. For sure. I'm so happy.